I'm Josh Klinetic, Communications Coordinator for Middle Tennessee Electric. Welcome to our new podcast, Unmetered. As a member on not-for-profit electric cooperative, we're focused on providing affordable, reliable, safe electricity and outstanding member service. One way that we've found that we can do that is by providing more avenues of communication to you, our member. Through this podcast, we hope that you'll be able to find some helpful hints, tips, and things to help you conserve energy, as well as some informational pieces that will help you understand what it is to be a member. Welcome to our third installment of Unmetered. Last week, we talked a little bit more about National Co-op Month, uh, Public Power Week, and we also talked a little bit about uh, the crews that we sent down to Florida to help out with Hurricane Matthew relief. This week, we're talking about uh, something else that's important to the memberships, energy efficiency. Let's take a look. Unmetered is brought to you by Middle Tennessee Electric. As a member of a not-for-profit electric cooperative, one of the things that uh, that is great about the cooperative business model is we actually encourage our members to use less of our product. Uh, so one of the ways that we do that is by having energy efficiency programs and, and ways that uh, our members can learn not only about energy efficiency, but learn to use and manage their monthly consumption uh, a little bit better. Today, uh, we actually have one of our energy efficiency experts, uh, our, one of our energy services coordinators, Mandy Pinion, uh, here to talk a little bit about energy efficiency and, and some of the things that, that you see out in the field. So Mandy, tell me, what is it that, well, let's just, first of all, let's just jump into it. What is it that you do for the co-op? I... Like, your, what do you do? What do I do? Yes, what do you do? Uh, I spend time with our members out at their homes, uh, helping them look for ways to save money on their light bill. So, just a couple minutes ago, you told me you get in crawl spaces and climb in attics. Yeah. I mean, is that just the easy way to put it? That is the easy way to put it. Okay, just making sure. Yes, I spend time in attics looking at attic insulation, the, de- the quality mm-hmm. of it. Uh, looking at ductwork if that's where it's located. Okay. Uh, same thing, that's what I'm doing underneath the house, checking for air leaks, checking to see what kind of shape ductwork is in. Uh, so yes, I spend time up in attics and underneath houses. So here in a couple weeks, we're actually gonna have uh, two of your counterparts uh, on and we're really gonna dive into exactly what it is you guys do and, and also the eScore program and, and a couple other things, um, you know, just to really understand more about what it is you all do. But today, I kind of want to talk about uh, just the energy efficiency aspect of it and and being in houses. And now you're primarily in Rutherford and Cannon County, correct? Correct, Rutherford and Cannon County. So what is the most common thing that you see, the most common energy inefficiency that you see in some of the houses that you go in? The thing I see that I recommend the most, the easiest problem for people to fix, um, is going to be things like attic insulation. A lot of houses that we go into are 15, 20, 25 years old, and energy codes have improved over time, and so the insulation that was installed originally is no longer effective. And so that's usually one of the easiest, cheapest things we can tell people to do, that they're going to see savings and they're going to see comfort levels get better quicker. Um, And I know that's not the cheapest thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's other things they could do, like weather stripping around doors adding caulk around windows. But if they want to see a comfort level change Mm -hmm. and see that utility bill drop, something like attic insulation would be a good first step for them. So if somebody is in a a home and and can't afford that, you know, just, I I think you kind of see where I'm going with this giant display here. Um, Is there, obviously light bulbs, you know, we we talk about them a lot. Um, and, And we put a lot of information out there we have this really cool touchstone energy um, uh, display to talk about light bulbs. And, and so, you know, if I can't afford insulation or I can't afford ductwork um, right away anyways, mm-hmm. and I just need something that's going to help reduce my electric bill, um, you know, are light bulbs a beneficial, inexpensive change? They are. And that's a great first step. Um, incandescent bulbs like this one here that mm-hmm. most everyone uses. Those are pretty big energy hogs. If you took the time to go through your house and count how many bulbs you have in the house and then went through and paid attention to the ones that you use most often, Mm -hmm. those are the great ones to change out first. Um, If you didn't have a lot of money to spend, you may want to go with a CFL bulb, one of these. Uh, That's going to help save money on your utility bill and uh, help pull that cost down. Mm -hmm. If you've got a little bit more money or lights that you use more often, you may want to go with an LED bulb. Yes, those are way more expensive. However, they're going to last 
forever. So one of the things that, that I did kind of in, in preparation for all of this is, and, and I think that we're going to put a graphic up, um, but we talked, we looked at, you and I talked about, uh, about cups of coffee mm -hmm. and, and this great little way to kind of illustrate, you know, I mean, I drink coffee. Um, I know a lot of folks hit those local spots um, a lot. And so uh, spending two bucks on a cup of coffee, really, I mean, that's a cheap cup of coffee, you know, depending on where you go. Right. Um, so for an incandescent bulb, for $2, looking at, you know, just if, if we're averaging, um, you know, figure nine cents, thereabouts, 9.5, 9.4 cents, which is about what our, our last year's uh, per kilowatt hour rate was. Right. Incandescent bulbs are getting me, if I wanted to spend $2, and that was it, for one bulb, how much time am I looking at thereabouts? Uh, for $2, you're going to get about 200, a little more hours So for 2 and, bucks. And, and so, okay, now we jump up to, to a CFL bulb, mm -hmm. which, don't mind my pen, CFL bulb uh, coming up here, you know, I mean, it's considerably more because it's more efficient, correct? Right. It's going to cost you a little bit more up front, right. but you're going to save money over time. Okay. For that same $2 cup of coffee, you're looking at just shy of around 1,000 hours. Okay, and then for the LED, again, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a considerable amount up front. Yeah. Um, and so if if you're willing to, or not willing to, but if you can make that investment, um, you know, which the prices are coming down on LED yeah. bulbs, um, you know, you're looking at, at how many hours, again, for one bulb, Mm -hmm. at, for two bucks. For two dollars, around twenty one hundred hours. So, <laughs> two thousand hours for one bulb, twenty one hundred hours for one bulb, um, for two bucks, and price is coming down. So it seems like it's pretty easy fix. But and now, if I remember correctly, um, you had said that you're looking at about twenty percent annually thereabouts. If I change all my bulbs out to like an LED bulb, correct on my on my electric bill around. 15, 16 percent up to, depending on the size of the house. Right. How often you're using your lights. You know, a lot of new homes today, they've got tons of windows and people don't want to use as much. So you may not see as big of a savings. Mm -hmm. It really is going to vary house to house in how much they're using it. But if you're honest with yourself and pay attention to the lights, the bulbs that you're using the most often, those are the ones that you want to put that investment in. Especially something like um, outside lights, your floodlights, things that you're leaving on all night long. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are the more expensive LEDs. However, those are the ones you're using the longest. Right. So those would be a good first stop, or first place to uh, put that investment. So jumping off of light bulbs, you know, we, we understand that, that those are, are good places to start off with. We understand that ductwork and, and attic insulation is a good way to make an investment, um, you know, to... to increase your comfort level, drop your electric bill. But there's also another culprit that is actually a bit bigger than any of those, well, or even those combined. What, what, do you, what, what is the biggest piece of my electric bill, in your opinion? The biggest user in your home yeah. is going to be your HVAC, HVAC unit. Whether it's air conditioning in the summertime or if you've got a heat pump for the wintertime, you're looking at... 45 to 50% possibly of your utility bill. So that's huge. So when it comes to times like, say, August uh, or February, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I have my thermostat set at, you know, 75, 76, something like that. Um, I hope it's not set at that in February. <laughs> if I, <laughs> we if, need to have a talk. <laughs> if, I, if I set my thermostat and don't touch it, you know, I mean, I, in, in the middle of August, it's 100 degrees outside, and I get my bill and all of a sudden my bill is through the roof. Why? Because your unit's probably not shutting off. The thing that a lot of people don't realize, it may, the thermometer outside may say 95 degrees, but you've got to remember the humidity. You know, they, with the heat index, it may be 110. And the units today, if you even had a brand new unit, mm -hmm. those units are only designed to do 75 when it's 95 outside. So if that um, heat index is up to 110, that unit's going to run hard. And then if you've got a unit with some age on it or a unit that you haven't had serviced regularly, mm -hmm. it's going to run even harder and longer, and then that's going to make your utility bill go up. So that actually brings me to the, to my last question is if, if I have a, a malfunctioning unit, if my HVAC unit is is an issue, if, it, if, it start, if it's not shutting off or, or I haven't gotten it serviced, 
how much more do you think that that's going to make my bill increase? Depending on the age, of course. Mm -hmm. There's so many variables that go into it, um, but it could easily make it go up 15, 20%. Wow. So when we come back, we're actually going to talk about one of the ways that, uh, that Middle Tennessee Electric has uh, goes about helping the members uh, with, with the heat pump loan program. Uh, we'll be right back. The SCAN program is approximately 16 years old, run through the Sheriff's Department as an outreach to the seniors in our community to make sure that they have the necessities of life, food, water. It's all those kinds of items um, are purchased with money that we have received from the foundation. Without that, our uh, ability to furnish those needs would have been limited. We're talking today about uh, energy efficiency and uh, some of the things that, that go into that. And, and uh, we recently learned that you know, our heating and air conditioning units can be about 50% of your bill. And, and when one of them starts to malfunction, it can actually uh, increase your bill exponentially. Uh, Middle Tennessee Electric actually has a program for people who are looking to uh, replace their heating and air conditioning unit. Um, it's called the Heat Pump Loan Program. Uh, and here to talk to us a little bit about it, we have our energy services specialist, Steve Brewer. Uh, Steve, you, you administer this, this program, this heat, lo heat pump loan program. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, we offer a heat pump loan program for our members that are in good standing. It's a 10-year loan, 6% interest rate, no penalty for early payoff. Um, the monthly amount of your bill is just added to your electric bill every month as a service to our members. Okay. So um, now if, if, I, if I think that I'm having uh, a little bit of an issue with my HVAC unit, what would I do? I mean, if I, if I call somebody out and say, hey, there's an issue with it, um, you know, I, I, I want to get a new one. Um, how do I go about getting involved in the program? Okay, we only do financing with contractors that are in the Middle Tennessee Electric TVA Quality Contractor Network. Okay. The first step would be to meet with one or as many of our contractors as you would like. Okay. Uh, the contractors will set up a time to come give you a bid proposal. Okay. Uh, and to my knowledge, there's no charge for that or I've never heard of one. Okay. They will come, give you a bid proposal. Once you determine what contractor you want to go with, you could actually get your loan application from that contractor. Mm -hmm. You would fill it out and drop it off at one of our local offices. Okay. At that point, they would then send that to me if I was in the office. I would look over if everything looked to be filled out correctly. I would then send it to Regions Bank, who we work with. Okay. So if so, my contractor, I get everything, fill it out. Contractor sends it in. Uh, they say, hey, it's going to cost X amount of dollars. I say, great, let's go for it. Loan's approved. They come out and do the work. What happens next? After the work is completed, uh, what we would do then, we would go out and set up a time to review the work that's taken place. Okay. It's a visual review. We would look at everything, make sure that it was installed correctly. Mm -hmm. If everything looked to be installed correctly, we would then send a funding transmittal to the bank for them to fund the contractor for the price of that unit. Okay. At that point, we would then come back to finance and set up the, um, set the payment up on your bill. Okay. And then you would start paying for it monthly on your electric. So bill. that was that was where I was headed next. Um, is is when when my loan comes through. You know everything everything looks great. You guys, Middle Tennessee Electric comes out. We we do the the inspection. Everything looks good. Um, do I have to cut multiple checks? I mean, you kind of mentioned that that you look at it on the bill. Am I sending you two separate checks? How's how's that piece work? No, you'll just make one payment, your okay. electric bill. As a service to our members, when we receive that payment, we will take out the monthly amount and send that to Regions for you. So okay, so if my bill was 150 bucks mm -hmm. and my loan payment was 50 bucks, I'd just send a $200 check? You'd send a $200 check. We would pull out the $50 in finance and send that to Regions. Okay, and now you said no no penalty for early payoff. So if I you know, figure out that I can pay it off and, you know, six months or a year, you know, I hit the lottery or something, you know, I can go ahead and take care of that and not a problem? Absolutely. You awesome. would just give finance a call or give me a call or anybody on our staff mm -hmm. and we would find a payoff for you. You would write a check, the lien would be released, and you would be done with the loan. So one one more question. Uh, you had you mentioned uh, a quality contractor network. Where would I find the contractors that, that I could use? If you would go to mtemc.com. Okay. 
in the middle of the page, you'll see an area that says My Residence. Mm -hmm. If you hold your cursor on it, you're going to get nine drop downs. Okay. The second one is going to say Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay. You click it, it tells you a little bit about our loan program, like I just explained, that mm -hmm. it's a 10-year loan, 6% interest rate, no penalty for early payoff. In the fourth small paragraph, it has approved heating and air contractors. Click it, and you're going to get a local list of about 20 contractors. Okay. And uh, you could just start calling those contractors. Now, do I have to use one that's in my county? So if I if I live in Rutherford County, do I have to use one in my county? You or? do not. As okay. long as somebody was on that list. They just could be in Williamson County, Wilson County. A lot of them go to different counties. Okay. Um, so you could use any one on that list. Very cool. Uh, that That's actually real helpful. So... Uh, one more time, if someone's interested, where can they find the information? MTEMC.com. Okay. In the middle of the page, you'll see an area that says My Residence. Okay. Hold your cursor on it. You're going to get nine drop downs. The second one is going to be Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay. Click it. It tells you all about our loan program. Awesome. And in the fourth paragraph, you will see Approved Heating and Air Contractors. Click it, and you will go to a link, and you will get a page of the contractors that are approved. Step one, call it to make sure, check out the list, get a contractor, get a bid, get your loan, get it in, get everything installed, flip that, get everything installed, get everything approved, start making your payments. Good to go? Correct. Awesome. I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Thank All right. you, Josh. Unmetered is brought to you by Middle Tennessee Electric. Thanks for tuning in to Unmetered this week. Make sure and check us out next week when we talk about our pumpkin carving contest, which actually launches uh, this Thursday on the 20th. Uh, so go to our Facebook page and make sure and enter. Uh, we're going to talk about some general pumpkin carving safety, but also some electrical safety. We'll see you next week.